Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel here. So lately I've been doing these um, shopping series where I build theoretical PCs and then I show you what the performance would be for those PCs. And today I'm continuing with that series and I'm going to be doing a 6,000 Rand EVTEC PC for today's build. So what can 6,000 Rand get you if you're a South African and you want to build a computer but you have a really low budget 6,000 isn't a lot um, it's about maybe 350 400 dollars so it's not a lot of money for a new computer uh, considering this uh, series is new um, and it's straight from stores so with that in mind what can you get for that probably not much but uh, let's see if we can get a gaming PC built for that now you have to be realistic you're not gonna build a HD beast with ultra graphics at HD for every game that's not going to happen but we might just be able to put something together that will game so with that in mind let's uh, check out what they have and let's see what we can build let's do it keys fan offers cheap and legal OEM software keys which are 100% official and use online activation they have 24 7 customer service and lifetime after sales if the key is invalid, the money can be returned. So you have a lot of security there. It's an excellent opportunity to renew the operating system and achieve an improvement in performance and security. Keys fan sells Windows, Microsoft Office, bundles and computer tools. Keys fan keys are way cheaper than Microsoft keys. Use coupon code ALC50, that's ALC50, to get 50% off on Windows. Use coupon code ALC62 to get 62% off on Microsoft Office and bundles. Now those are some incredible deals. So if you are looking for a new key for your Windows or your Microsoft Office account or any sort of software that you might need use keys fan keys to get those for yourself and support the channel as well all right so here we are taking a look at our components that i have uh, pre-selected for this theoretical build now on eftex website you get something called um a pc builder which is pretty self-explanatory it's just you can build pcs from the website on the website and you even get some discounts which is really nice but for this uh, sort of video I'm not doing that because I want to select pre-select the parts and then talk about them individually but for this um, CPU RAM and motherboard I've actually selected a what is called a upgrade kit which is another thing that EVTEC has on their site where you can buy three parts that are compatible in one kit so that you can save a little bit and that it's pre-selected. You don't have to worry about compatibility. You don't have to worry about pre-selecting your own parts. So I've decided to pre-select th this bundle um, and I'm gonna talk about the individual parts and this total comes out to 4,200 Rand, which is about $250, um, around about there. Uh, which is a good price for a decent motherboard, RAM, and a CPU. Um, so let's talk about the CPU first of. Um, I have gone with the Ryzen 5 Pro 4650G. Now, this the reason that I've chosen this CPU is the fact that it has not built in APU. Um, this is the G version of the... 4600 the 4650g and this has the ability to play games at a pretty decent frame rate um, at hd or 720p um, now preferably you'll play at 720p because you'll just get that little bit of extra leeway for graphic options um, but if you're not playing esports you're not going to be playing AAA games at high graphics with this but you might play some at medium and mostly low at 720p or 1080p um, and this CPU is a Zen 2 CPU in the um, Ryzen lineup. Um, it was released a couple years ago. I don't, I don't know exactly, maybe about two or three years ago. But it's still a solid choice 
for gaming. Um, and it, it has a pretty low power draw, which when you combine a graphics card and a CPU, usually your power draw is around 250 watts. For this, it's only 65 watts for both. So if you're someone that's gonna play games, but you're into strategy games, esports games, um, racing games, um, and GTA, <laughs> Uh, then you'll be okay with something like this and you'll save a lot of money. Um, so with that said, the CPU has six cores. It has 12 threads. So even for workstation duties, this is a decent choice. It's not a beast, so to say, but it is a good choice for basic workstation duties and maybe even a little bit of 3D rendering and modeling. Um, so with that said, let's talk about the motherboard. This is a pretty basic ASUS motherboard. Um, the B450MK2 uh, ASUS Prime motherboard um, and you get what you see basically it's it's pretty basic but ASUS do make quality parts um, and if you take a look at the board itself let's see if we can find a okay so I'm just gonna look at look at it like this you'll see um, it only has two dim slots so you will be limited on RAM but for a board like this this uh, bundle comes with 16 gigs you're not going to need more than 16 gigs anyway it has the one pcie slot which is standard now and if you can make it out there's a nvme slots as well for for your um for your nvme ssd um so it's quite basic but it really has all you need for a build like this and i do like how compact it is um so there's not too much to say about the motherboard it's a decent motherboard it's nothing amazing it's nothing terrible it's just a motherboard these days moving on to the ram um they have included clev bolt xr now this is ddr4 um this cpu is a ddr4 cpu and this um ram is relatively fast at 3600 megahertz that's pretty fast uh, especially for games and it's i think it looks nice it has sort of like this blackout gray kind of look um it's not rgb it's not super fancy or anything but in the right build this looks nice um and a lot of builds are going anti-rgb now anyway this one will have rgb just because of the case but um yeah it's it's good ram um i don't see too much information about the timings or anything like that but let's be honest, when you're purchasing a system for 6,000 Rand, you're not too worried about things like RAM timings and speeds and such. Um, but at the end of the day, this is good RAM. Um, it, it's a low power draw RAM as well, and it's got pretty good speed. So it's a solid choice. And we do get 16 gigs of it uh, at this price for this uh, bundle. So with that said, let's move on to the nvme drive i'm just going to drag the tab here uh, let me close this as well and we are going with clev again this is the clev uh, cras i don't know if that's crass or whatever uh, c27512 gig m.2 uh, pcie um, now this nvme drive is sort of medium in terms of speed at 3400 megabits uh, read and 2400 write now this is a 512 gig um, but it's priced at 500 rand which is about 30 dollars so it's a good price um, i think it's 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 a good price for what you get and nvmes and ssds are getting cheaper which is good but again for gaming this is going to be more than enough you might need more capacity um, so you might add another SSD or even a hard drive uh, down the line but for installing maybe 10 games these days uh, 512 gigs is good and um, it will help a lot with loading times and things like that so it's a good solid option um, if you want a little bit more space just choose something that's a terabyte it'll be around seven to eight hundred rand maybe maybe a thousand so with that <clears throat> with that said let's take a look at the case now you already know i love this case uh, at this price of course um i actually just sold a pc that has this case and um, it's just such a good value um, it's not a big case um, it's it's pretty compact it's quite narrow but then it, it's sort of like narrow and tall and it has those three uh 
RGB fans, they are static, but it looks they the diffusion of the lights pretty good, and with that mesh front, it looks really cool. Um, and you won't even have to break out any of those pins at the back for the PCI slots because you're not going to be running a graphics card in this. Um, and heat won't be a problem either because um, this is just going to push that heat out. Now, you can add a fan at the back and two at the top and two at the bottom if you want to. Uh, if that's something you want to do, just purchase a fan pack. It's going to be around a thousand rand for five or so fans. Um, but it's not necessary um, adding one at the back should be fine and you can get one for around 100 grand if it's just a standard black fan um, Antic fan so not too much to say about this. I've spoken about this case so much before um, I think it looks amazing um, I, I know it's a good case because I've used it. It is a little bit flexible. It's a little bit cheap uh, metal but at this price point, you know, what do you expect? Um, it's 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 not cheap feeling but it is a little bit flexible so to say but it's really it's good enough and it's got a, a really good side panel with these um, screws that you use to take off the side panel that is tempered glass and um, yeah overall I just I really love this case um, with that said let's take a look at the power supply now again this is on sale can't ignore this it is not the best power supply but it's not close to being the worst either um, it does meet 80 plus efficiency it's not rated bronze or anything like that which is unfortunate but when you're only pulling 120 watts maximum um, you don't even need this the, you you know you would be fine with a 300 watt power supply if you're not planning on getting a graphics card later on but this was the cheapest one on the site and they don't have smaller options um, so that's why I chose this and it does give you that future upgradability where if you do decide to get let's say a 3060 um, this will still be fine for that and you can just plug and play everything is ready to go you don't need to worry about anything like this uh, like that and this um, LED fan that they have at the top here is going to work well with the LED fans uh, RGB LED fans in the case already so it's going to it's gonna they will go well together because this sort of perforated mesh look is the same that we have on this case more or less so i think it will look really nice together and um this power supply is more than good enough for this pc but if you are building a more power intensive and expensive pc i would consider a little bit better in terms of power supplies um so that's it for the um, selection of the parts and talking about it. In the next section, I'm just going to take a quick look at the pricing and uh, quickly discuss those. Now, usually I, I have um, uh, sort of like Excel sheets that I make for those, but uh, for the EFTX series, I'm just taking a look at them in the shopping cart. Um, so stick with me for that and uh, let's discuss the pricing a little bit. Let's do it. Okay, let's take a quick look at the pricing and the uh, parts that we selected for this build. So for the CPU, we, well, the CPU, the motherboard and the RAM, we got a bundle deal with the upgrade kit for 4,408 Rand. We got the Ryzen 5 Pro for 650G, the Prime B450MK2, and 16 gigs of 3600 megahertz ddr4 ram that comes up to 4408 rand which is a really good price and a very competitive price and i think it will be hard to beat in other stores and um, it's a good selection of parts that's going to work well with a very low budget system as for the case we went with the antic ax20 mid tower case um, i've spoken about this case so many times it's a great case um it has two usb 2s one usb 3 and then your audio options at the top um it has that perforated front mesh so a lot of air moves through it comes with three fans rgb static um, it does have breakout slots which is unfortunate but for this build we don't need to break them out and then apart from that uh, a lot of perforation and it does have that power supply basement so a very good case i really like it Moving on to the um, SSD, the NVMe drive, we have a 512 gig Clev Crass C720. Um, 
decent speeds, not the best, not the words, worst, and um, just a standard drive, um, gonna be great for gaming. Um, but if you need something bigger, uh, be be willing to spend twice as much um, for a one terabyte. And then finally, the power supply, we have the Gamdias Kratos E1600 RGB, which is a 600 watt power supply. Um, it has that RGB fan, which most people won't care about, but if you do that, it has that, uh, which is apparently addressable. So you can plug it into the motherboard and control the effects. I don't, I don't think you would, especially because the other fans are static. Um, and it does meet 80% efficiency, but it doesn't have uh, sort of like a bronze or a, uh, a rating like that. So it's not the best power supply, but for this build, it is overkill and it is future proof. Um, so more than what we need. Um, so that all comes up to five five thousand nine hundred and ninety five ninety nine, uh, just under six thousand rand, and um, I think it's a really good price for a system that will be able to game at low to medium settings at uh, HD, or if you're playing esports games, it will do uh, high graphics at HD um, at sixty FPS. So. All of this is achieved without a power uh, without a graphics card um, all through the apu on the cpu and um, i think that's incredible that we can do that um, especially at no extra cost really for the cpu um, and uh, down the line you can upgrade a graphics card if you need to so with that said let's take a look at the plausible gaming performance and um, let's take a look at how this PC would do in different kinds of games and um, whether you should consider buying it for gaming, entry-level gaming. So with that said, let's move on to the next section. Let's do it. All right, let's get into the theoretical benchmarks for the system that we have put together for 6,000 Rand. Um, first up here, we have Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. Um, this is the most recent Call of Duty game, and to be honest, I didn't think this game, this computer would be able to play this game at all. But it seems that at 1080p low settings um, and FSR performance, so a little bit of scaling there, uh, we are able to get 40 frames um, in a open city sort of scene. Um, the average is 38, and the frame rate for the screenshot is uh, 39. Um, and that's a pretty good result. Now, I don't know if I would play Call of Duty competitively at these sort of settings, uh, at this frame rate, but just for a fun experience, you can play, and this is multiplayer. So good to know that you can play Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2, um, the most recent one, with a computer like this. Next up, we have Counter-Strike Go. Um, now, this is running at 1080p low, um, but that's sort of like a competitive thing. You can set it to 1080p uh, high and you will probably only get like a 20% 20, 20 decrease in performance, something like that. Um, this is running at 159 frames, so high refresh rate, frame rate for eSports there. And um, yeah, it's a sharp looking game. Um, the frame time is good. The frame time graph is a little bit up and down, but it's not too bad. Uh, and the average is 153 frames. So a very good uh, result in terms of eSports Counter-Strike gaming. Then we have Fortnite. Now this is a little bit more difficult to run lately. Um, we are getting 60 FPS uh, and an average of 60 as well. Um, and this is running at 1080p low. Um, it looks nice still and um, I think it's a decent result. Definitely playable um, even at competitive um, scenarios. So pretty good result for Fortnite. Then we have Forza 5, um, 1080p low, 53 frames, 53 frames average, and a very smooth frame time graph there. And this is looking quite nice still now. A little bit of anti-aliasing would help the jagged look a little bit, but um, I do think this is um, a more than playable experience. You can probably put it on medium with a little bit of FXAA anti-aliasing and still get 40 frames. So definitely playable and you can push the graphics in a racing game a little bit. Then we have GTA 5, 1080p high, almost getting 60 FPS, 57 in this frame and 57 average and a very smooth frame time graph in this as well. So yeah, uh, even if you just want to play GTA, 
um, you can buy this instead of a console if you have some productivity that you need to get done on a computer. Very good result. Um, do we have any other? Yeah, we have Valorant. Um, 178 frames, even better than Counter-Strike, but this game is so basic in terms of graphics, I don't even think it has normal maps. Um, so yeah, very good result. 1080p low, again, you can push it too high if you want to, turn a little bit of anti-aliasing on, and still get easily above 100 frames. Average of 176, so very good, um, pretty good frame time graph there, and uh, naturally a very smooth experience. So that's it for the theoretical benchmarks that we uh, do for the series. Um, and the question is, can you game on a system like this? The answer is definitely. Um, but how do you define gaming? Do you need to play at high settings at HD? Or are you okay with turning down the settings and playing more competitive games? Um, you know, things like Days, well, Days Gone might run well, but... Um, Horizon Zero Dawn or Spider-Man, those kinds of games might be a little bit of a bridge too far for a computer like this. But if you <clears throat> if you only have 6,000 Rand and you're only starting out, this might be a good uh, gap sort of computer where you can upgrade the graphics card a year or two down the line. Um, you can definitely game on this. And maybe you're someone that wants to decide if they want to get into gaming because you don't want to spend too much on a computer if you don't even know if you want to game. Um, but you want to try it out so you can build a computer like this and you can still do you know your productivity tasks you can do your if you're a student university or high school student you can do your homework you can do your research uh, if you're someone that needs productive workloads you can do some 3d work some rendering um, some architectural work and you know the thing with pcs is, is, is there's a lot you can do you can write a book if you want to, you can make software, you can, um, yeah, you can do anything, you can consume media, um, use it as a media PC, um, and um, yeah, so the point is, uh, if you want to get into a little bit of gaming, but you have other things to do as well, you can get a computer like this, if you just want to game, I would probably say get an Xbox for this price, because I think you can get a Series S, um, yeah, I think you can get a Series S for very close to this price. So with that said, uh, will it game? Definitely. Just depends on what you want to do. Um, yeah, anyway, um, that's it for this video. Um, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the content. Uh, like and subscribe, and I hope to see you in the next one. Cheers.